I want to make a valid contribution to injury prevention, but never have done before. How do I go about it? Hey, I'm Sarah from Most Motion, and I'm here with another video for every sports and fitness coach who wants to feel like they're making a valid contribution to preventing injuries, but have not done any specialism with uh, injuries at all, maybe have not had any experience of injuries before either. So if that's you, you're in the right place. So the first thing we need to do to help you get started with getting involved in making contribution is to recognize that actually you don't need to specialize in injuries to make a valid contribution. Now, there's going to be some coaches who hate the fact that I just said that because they like to feel clever with all the big words that they know about injuries and anatomy and all that kind of stuff. But the reality is that injuries are a much bigger problem than most coaches will recognize, okay? They are a global problem, which means that it is bigger. The issue of injuries is bigger than just one or two areas or um, groups of people, okay? So just like plastic or uh, climate change or even the coronavirus pandemic, okay? Um, they, the idea is that it's a global problem and we all need to work together. We all need to contribute to make it go away. So in the same way that with those other global pandemic things like the pandemic or the uh, plastic problem or climate change issue, okay, is we're not gonna fix that. The, the scientists are not gonna fix that by themselves. We all need to play our part. Now we can't all be scientists. We can't all be medical professionals, but we can choose recyclable products, we can use less energy, and we can wear a face mask. They are all things that are hugely valuable contributions to this problem. And it's the same with injuries, okay? We all need to play our part. Like I said, we can't all be scientists. We can't all be medical professionals. We can't all be injury specialists because they're focusing on the treatment and while they might be very good at that and the, uh, the industry needs those people, it also needs people who are uh, making the smaller contributions and making that they're taking the small actions every day that's going to help prevent these issues happening in the first place. So how does that apply to injuries? Well, it's in every subtle movement avoidance that you notice in your clients. Let's say they're, um, I don't know, they're doing um, a squat and you notice that they, they just don't look comfortable in their movements. It's that small action that's gonna help to contribute to preventing injury in that person because that, that movement might not be painful yet. It's in every uh, client we help to reconnect with their own bodies so they can tell us about the problems that they're having earlier because most of the clients we have don't recognize the difference between pain and problems or just aches and pains in their bodies because the industry has been teaching them through the words that we use all the time that they are moving wrong. Uh, they're not, uh, they have dysfunctional movements. All these things we're telling them that they don't, so they don't trust their own bodies anymore. They're not listening to their own bodies anymore because they're listening to us coaches more than they need to, okay? We need to rebalance that. So with every client that we get to reconnect with their own bodies, so they can tell the difference between problems and tiredness. Uh, that helps to recognize these problems earlier so we can start doing something about it earlier. And it's with every time our warm-ups are focused on a variety of movement rather than just repeating the same old movements again. It's when our cool downs are focused on switching from the production of excess stress hormones when we're training to stopping that excess production of uh, stress hormones when we're cooling down. It's all these small little actions that we can all take. Now, injury prevention is not a sexy topic. It really isn't, okay? And I did a little survey in a couple of Facebook uh, groups recently. I asked the question, injury prevention is fun, true or false? And overwhelmingly, clients would say, that injury uh, preventing injuries is better than being injured okay so they don't like it they don't like doing it they think it's an a, a necessary evil okay <laughs> they'll do it because it's better than being injured but if they had the choice they wouldn't bother so sports and fitness coaches we have the power to turn this tide okay if 
uh, let's say, for example, the uh, coronavirus pandemic, if it had an image problem, if it wasn't a sexy topic, if it wasn't something that the public cared about, then there would be a lot more people dying from this problem than there have been, okay? The, with the um, government, that's the word, the government needed to get people on board with the idea of not going out and, uh, you know, hands, face, space, all this kind of stuff where they need to get people on board with that. And this is where sports and fitness coaches really have the power to turn the tide here, okay? So we have the power to be the supermarket that stopped offering free plastic bags to everybody. We have the power to be David Attenborough who made saving the planet cool, okay? <laughs> and be under no illusions. Your actions here really matter. If you think of, if you think that comparing injuries to these global problems is a bit of a stretch, is a bit of an over-exaggeration, then just think about this. In 2017, Versus Arthritis uh, did a survey of all of the money that the NHS was spending on musculoskeletal problems. So that's joints, muscles, bones, all that kind of stuff. And they came out with 22% of the total treatment spent by the NHS was on musculoskeletal injuries, okay? So right now, the world is in the biggest economic crisis it's ever been in. So can you imagine how much more good the NHS could do, the healthcare systems across the world could do if they weren't spending so much money on musculoskeletal problems? And we add to that the fact that these um, all the um, operations and all these things that the, the healthcare systems have had to postpone because of the coronavirus. It, some sources have said this could take up to five years for the NHS to get back on track with those things. And that's not counting the rising tide of people who've had these kinds of problems over the pandemic and have not decided not to go and get medical treatment for it, okay? It's us, we are on the front line. And if you think that this is something that you want to get involved with, then you need to come and join us at, on our free Facebook group. It's injuryhackers.com. I put the, the little screen thing up there so you can see it. Come and join us at injuryhackers.com. We are all in that group dedicated to doing everything we can to solve the global injury crisis. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again next time.